Good morning. I'm excited that I am able to sit here without headache, without feeling bad, without uh, anything that would prohibit me from being able to bring uh, the word of God from Numbers, the second chapter. And let me ask God to forgive us for what we have done to people, mindset. When you see people sit down and you just can assume if you just hear the word of God, you just sort of flip, you just flip through. Let me, let me just ask God to forgive us of our sins because I am definitely not going to bring to you some religious ways, uh, something that didn't make you feel like I already know that because today I found out something that I did not know and I got it from the mouth of a king, which is the word of God. And if you flip across me, I hope you'd be encouraged to come back and hear what he's saying because I do declare if I could run around or do something exciting to get you to stop and listen for a minute because this word in Numbers 2 is it's, 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 it's amazing to me. So I come to you at first and I say I, 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 I'm sorry that I learned it so late. Maybe if my hair was a, a, a darker color or maybe if I wasn't at the age I, I don't know God used Moses when he was eight and I don't know what the color the hell was but I tell you this morning I got something today that would make you want to pay attention to God's word I am not I declare to you I am not coming hey Jennings I am not coming to you with anything that sounds like you heard it at church and if you did, you ought to just lift that place up like, because what I got this morning, this is for everybody in Congress, everybody in, everybody all over the world. Because God is getting ready to show you something that he did in Numbers 2 that I've never seen before in my life. And I pray if you are my white brother, or if you understand it's something that God getting ready to, to awake today, I promise you, I never saw it in my life. <sighs> Let me go back and tell you something that I was talking to my brother last night. He lives in Mississippi. And he deals with a lot of men that have nothing to do but perhaps waste their lives. So he stops, pick them up, give them a job, you know, you know whatever he can find for them to do, he pays them and then sometimes give them somewhere to stay until they can perhaps get up on their feet and then he get a chance to drop some word inside of them. So last night we were talking and I spent a lot of time in the word of God because I don't know God. I don't, I don't know his word. I just, all I knew about God is that he had a book contained with words that some chapters I knew, some chapters I didn't know. So I just decided to see what he had to say. And I found this book, this book is more interested in any conversation I can sit down with the most expensive order, um, what you call it, the appetizer. I'd rather do this than sit down with somebody eat the best of the food. Because this book makes sense to me. When I get through talking with this book, this book tells me about myself and how I ought to make decisions and how to be careful of things that don't enhance what God wants to do through me. I had never seen anything like before in my life. And I pray that everybody that has the mind of God get hungry enough to demand what is in this book. I'm like the words said when the lady lost her coin and she found it. And she said, come and celebrate with me because I have found that thing I was looking for. And this is what I've been looking for all my life. And it is not religious. I can't say it enough. I cannot say it enough. This book is not religious. This book has nothing to do with religion. Let me tell you what I know. I spent 33 years behind the public school system teaching. This is the best book, the best curriculum that you can teach anybody at any time. Let me show you something. I was going to try to save this to the end. I printed this, and it looks like something that you would get. Ah, that's for children. Oh, that's just for children. You, you, I don't think so. When I get through reading it, you're going to see that it's the easiest way to illustrate it. How about hanging it up around your house and provoke the children and ask questions and say, what is that? Because when you do see this, you'll find out that we don't even know what we say is for children. 
and I printed it that way so you could see the colorfulness of it. Good morning. And also see the seriousness of it because it's not going to look like that when I start telling you what it is. This is what we don't know. This is what we don't because if we knew this, some of the things I hear us say, we wouldn't say it. Uh, Father, I thank you right now that any word that I say that's not lining with your word, you will bring correction and I will bring it back and, 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 and say I was wrong. And uh, forgive me of anything that I say or have anything in my heart against anybody. Help me not, not to have that old woman grudge. Help me to just live right. Be an example of who you are and what you have to say. And Father, forgive me for my diet of last week. My diet last week is out of order. And help me be a better person. So next week, by the time I get on a Sunday, I can say I've done the will of the Lord. <laughs> Thank you for your word. You are almighty. You are the king. You are worthy to be praised. And I don't say that because they tell me to say it. I don't say it because they said, look at your neighbor and say it. I say it because I see it in the book. And I thank you for allowing me to live long enough to see this thing the way it should be and to be able to teach it the way you meant it to be taught. That's the best I know how to do. All I can tell you, if I make a mistake, I declare I'll be the first one to tell you I ain't say that right. No, I don't wait at other people. Oh, she ain't say that right, child. I find God to deal with me and say, go back and read that over or take that down. Whichever one is appropriate. Do it over or take it down. All right. Numbers chapter 2, I'm going to get in there. But let me tell you all what my brother told me yesterday. And this concerns God when he was telling the children, children of Israel who they were to sleep with and what they were not to sleep with. And when underlined the word what. My brother had not read uh, what I read, but he has the heart of God. And he was telling me that he picked these guys up. And they live way out in the country where there's not necessarily a whole lot of people around. Let me tell you what I found out that them folk doing in 2020. And why God's instruction to the children of Israel was to do this. Because he knew whatever's in that book, we're doing it. Whatever is in that book, we are doing it. And don't stop your children's ears up from hearing this. Because it's happening to the kids. And it's happening to the adults too. And children need to know so they'll be able to, to, to not wait till they get older and start saying what's happening. But to be able to say this is wrong and I mean it is wrong now. And I'm going to say some things that you might want to get your ears ready for because what he told me, I was ready because I had read it in the Word. This is nothing to make you lose your appetite or to say, I can't believe it. It's happening. And he didn't even know that I had covered this over the Word. When God had given the children of Israel, understand these people were coming out of bondage. They were coming from a land to a land. God has taken them to a land, but he had to get them educated. For instance, let me show you the kind of people God might have been. These people might have been amongst the people God was bringing. Not necessarily saying all of them, but let me show you what God wanted to do. My brother described to me in a little town in Mississippi that he picked people up. And this is not just Mississippi, but it's 2020, fresh off the press. So there's a father. And it was known when his wife was alive. I don't know whether how long ago it was, but he just told me this last night. We were just talking. He said, these guys that he pick up sometimes, they, they've been all exposed to all kind of stuff. And he said, there was one of the fathers in this, in this out in the country type area, in the rural area. Not necessarily just in the rural area. This just happened to be what he's telling me. But this happened right in, my, in the United States, right here in Atlanta, 2020. And this is, this is what I have never heard in anybody's church. Never heard this in my life. This guy, he told me that this man had sons. And he was sleeping with his own boys. He was sleeping with his own sons. And they just lived like that. Okay. And um, he, um, he said, and the wife knew it. And the word clearly says, that's why when he was talking to the children, it was, y'all do this stuff. He said, we do this stuff. That's why I'm going to put it in the book so you'll know I'm saying I'm against it. Not only that, I'm not done. These guys work with mules. And this guy said, 
uh, this other man was telling him, he was, I, I don't, I want to say this guy, I'll just say, this is what he was telling me last night. He said he worked on a mule and he rode the mule and he said he'll watch that mule walk all day long. Just look at him from behind. And he put him in a stall where the mule couldn't move, but just only, only thing that you could do is come behind the mule. And this man actually had a sexual relationship with the mule that he was riding. This is, this is real. These are, these are our kin folks. That's crazy to me because I couldn't imagine when God was saying it. I see a little bit stuff on YouTube, but this stuff is happening just as sure as God said it's written. It is happening. He said, don't do it. And he talked to the children of Israel. It's way back there in the country where people, I'm saying this particular case, but I'm sure it's happening in places that we could even imagine. Just imagine marrying to a man, being married to a person who's sleeping with a mule. And they don't let you know that. They know it's wrong. That's not, I'm not done yet. Because when he was talking, I said, I said, do you know that everything that you said, the word said that clearly not to do that? I said, I can't, and when I saw God said to the children of Israel, he said, he said, don't sleep with the fowl. I couldn't imagine, I didn't know what God was saying there. In my, and as he was speaking last night, he said, this guy said he would take a, a chicken off the yard and sit him in his lap and rock in a chair. And when he got through with the chicken, the chicken just fall dead. These are things that people are doing. These are people that God is saying even today that if you don't teach these things, people will continue to do these things. They need to hear the word of God. You sit up in the lap, you sit in the, you sit in a place with a chicken in your lap and you are having a sexual relationship. With, I said, how could that be? He said, it can be. I said, what are we doing? What are we doing that you say it can't be. Yes, it is. Because sometimes you're limited in what you teach because you don't know that it exists. So you read it and you, you can't relate to it. So therefore, you just act like these people must be somebody off, off, off the earth. And all these folk is right here. Right here. And their minds need to be cleared. And these are the kind of people God was bringing from Egypt because he told them this. Not only did he tell them this, he said, my people don't act like that. My people don't act like that. You don't sleep with mules and chickens and dogs and little kids. And then he walked in the place and saw two children. He, he, he said they were eating. And he said he called for the daddy. He said because the rat was eating at the same bowl with the two children sitting on the floor. And the daddy came in and he said, look. He said, oh, man. <laughs> These are the people that God said, I'm trying to get your mind regulated. I'm trying to take you from a place of where this is unacceptable. You have done these things. These are the things that we can't, oh, though that cannot be in, a, in where we live. Yes. Yes, it is. Well, the absence of the word of God is people to do anything. I can't even want, I don't even want to take my imagination. I, I just look at the word. I said, Lord, people, help me, Lord. Because some people, that these are our relatives, these are our neighbors, these are our students. These are, we don't know where people are coming from. And you cannot ignore the word of God and expect people to change. If they were doing it then, over many thousand years ago, and if the word is not alive and, 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 and plugged up so it can bring forth the light, people still are doing it. I know where you gonna sit up and lay, and lay up with a chicken, I, a sheep, a man. These are the things that the Lord clearly say don't do. Then we go make laws out of things and say we will do it, and then we wonder why we in the condition that we are. Oh, I'm not saying if you do whatever you do. I'm just saying God said my people can't do this. This is a this is a different class. So I brought that up to say because you wonder sometimes, you wonder, is this book old? Is it the Old Testament? Now these are things that we don't talk about. But Jesus said, when I come, I'm bringing light to everything. You're not going to have this in the country. 
You're not going to have this and just send this over there in another country. It's going on in our houses. This, this, how about you eating a chicken sometimes and you don't know what people done to that chicken or to that cow or to that. why we need the word of God. Because without God, we would absolutely do anything. All right, I'm going to tell you something about the book of Numbers that is going to be so relevant. Well, it is to me. And why, as, as who I am, I'm in search for the truth. And so anybody got a problem with God based on color, he's going to expose color today in a way of behavior. All right. Now, there are some things I'm going to explain, and I might not necessarily go through the names because I can't pronounce them. I tell you the truth, I can't. But I understand what, what's, what's happening here. Numbers chapter 2. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying. Now, in chapter 1, you cannot go to chapter 2 without understanding chapter 1. Chapter 1 told Moses to go and, and uh, told him, whoever, was he telling Moses? He told Moses, sometimes he's talking to Moses, sometimes he's talking to both Moses and Aaron. He told Moses, he said, get the people and count all the guys that's 20 years old and up that are able to go to war and put them in position and let one of the persons lead that group in each family. And it was 12 sons and 11 of those sons. Well, it was 12. And with the tribe of Levi, which would be the servants of the of the tabernacle, or in our day, the ministry or the church, they were not to be counted. Not like they were they were not to be counted because they won't always be at God's disposal to touch the things and the vessels and the things that God had in his tabernacle. So we're not we're not talking about them, but we're talking about the surrounding people. So he brings a little more clarity in what he wants done in chapter two. And I'm gonna show you how we can parallel today, 2020, to chapter 2 of Numbers. And he said, Every man of the children of Israel shall pitch his own... St Every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard with the ensign of their father's house. Far off about the tabernacle of the congregation shall they pitch... What does that mean? I meant to run this off in uh, the NIV so it would be easier for me to explain it. He said, Everybody that I put in charge of their... Uh, tribe or their family by the 12 sons of Israel except Levi's Joseph having two sons he said tell him I should set it up like this in verse 3 he said and on the east side so he's going to he's going to uh, hang in there I'm going to show you something and on the east side he said toward the rising of the sun he's telling Moses and Aaron this is how I want these guys to position themselves they of the standard of the camp of Judah, which was one of the sons of uh, Jacob, Israel, pitched throughout their armies, and Nashon, the sons of, well, this, I don't want to say all these names because I'm going to mess them up too bad. He said, in that particular one on the east side, I want Judah's family and the guy that's going to be there, and all 14,000, uh, were three scores means 60, 14 means uh, that's 74,600. He said, I need that group, Judah's group. I need y'all on the east side with Judah. And those that do pitch next unto him will be Issachar. And he's going to have right beside him 54,400. So these are 20 year old and up. These are the guys that if they have to go to battle, these guys are prepared were able about it to go. 50, I mean 20 and up. And then on the side of him is three guys. Then the tribe of Zebulon. Zebulon. That's the, another son of Jacob. And he's going to take all 700,000 with 50, uh, 700,050 and, and four. I can't read it like this. Let me just read the word and then we'll put it together. With 50 and 7,000 and 400. So there's 57,400 men going to be in that group. That's on the east side. All together, this was going to be um, 
all that number in the camp of Judah were 100,086,400. I'm giving you these numbers just to show you how clear God is organizing things. But just hang in there with me. I'm going to show you something. Then he said, let's go to the south side. On the south side shall be standards of the camp of Reuben. Another son. How many are going to be on that side? Is somebody representing uh, the, uh, Reuben's side on the south side. And in Reuben's tribe, there was 46,500 guys, 20 and up. Now, these came from 12 men. Like yesterday, God is saying, in a man, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of seeds. And when you kill one, you got to be accountable for every seed that's on the inside of the guy. And I really want to say this to especially my boys that look like me or my family that looks like me. You got to stop killing each other because you got to give the account of every seed inside of that man. And anybody kill you, whether or not, it's, it, this is, it's not about color, because I'm not, I don't program myself about color, but I got to say something today, because it's not being said in any color that I heard of. Now, it may be that I just haven't heard of it. I right, still on the south side. All right, Simeon. And Simeon had, on his side, on the south side with 59,300, 20 years and up that were that was able to go to war. Then he went to the tribe of Gad, still there's three sons in each side. Then the tribe of Gad, the captain of the son of Gad, and that guy name I can't pronounce, he had 45,650. All right, in that whole Reuben side, that was one uh one hundred thousand i can't read it like this it says um room where a hundred a hundred thousand fifty one thousand four hundred and fifty i can't like i said if i read the niv it'll tell you exactly how many it is one hundred and fifty thousand four hundred and fifty that's what it is all right then the tabernacle of the coming they set forth in the camps of the Levites. Levites, so they're in the, they're in the center. All right, I'm going to go down here to the west side, Ephraim. And the sons that lived in Ephraim's camp were 40,500. Another guy in Ephraim's camp, Manasseh, he had 32,200. And Benjamin, in that same camp, he had 35,400. So they're all in this separated, but this is the south side. All right, now let's go to the north side. Dan. All right, of them, there were 20 up that could fight. Was 70... Um, three score, that's 60, 60, when it's, it, it's very hard to read this, but when I get to reading all these numbers, I'm going to tell you what this means. Uh, 60,000, well, yeah, 60,000, 60, and two, 62,700. All right. And then Asher, in his camp, was 41,500. Then the tribe of Neptali. So I've gone over the, uh, the, uh, the uh, east, the west, and the north. All right. I'm not done yet. I hate I got to go through it like this, but I'm taking my time. And in that camp, they had and his host and those that were numbered of them were 53,400. And then let's go to the last side. All of these were the numbers in the camp of Dan. And that total thing was uh, 100,000, 
157,600. <laughs> I hope I'm reading them numbers right because King James didn't write it out when the NIV just put it in uh, numerical digits. And the last side they went on, um, I'm missing some. 30, verse 32, these are those which number of the children of Israel by the house of their father. All of those were numbered of the camp throughout their host were 600,000, three, 600,000, 3,000, 603,550. I missed one of them sides. I missed that south side somewhere. Oh, Lord, what did I miss it at? Because I was trying to skip it, but I didn't want to skip it. And I should have highlighted this. I'm sorry, y'all. All right, I'm not going to hold you up. But anyway, God went over all the sides. There was a number in the north side. There was a number in the south side. There was a number in the uh, east side. And there was a number in the west side. And maybe this little picture right here will tell me which one I missed. Anyway, let me just tell you what I read so you can understand. I'm not trying to, I hate to be like that. But anyway, it is what it is this morning. God had, the, the, the essence of this story or the summary of this story is... God took the children of Israel and he organized them. He organized them so much so until he, he knew exactly where everybody was positioned. He didn't put the big numbers and say, I'm going to put the big numbers in the back or I'm going to put the big numbers in the front. He organized them based on the order that he just gave. Mind you, these are people who are learning about God. They're used to doing what they, whatever they want to do, but he said, I'm going to take you and I'm going to train you and you're going to be my example so I can show the entire world that I have a group of people that are going to be your example so you can be just like them. I'm going to bring you from a land that you're not used to. You used to being slaves. You used to being... Uh, told what to do, you're getting, you're, re you're getting ready to go to a land that you're going to be set free. But at the same time, I got to keep you under me so you can always do the things that shows the world how I think. I'm not going to allow you to leave Egypt and go into Canaan like a mob. You're not going in there to terrorize those people the way you where you because you're such a great number. You are going to be so organized. And the people did exactly what Moses and Aaron and the people in charge organized that group just like that. All those people were organized. They had order. He brought them from one place to the promised land. And he did it in order. He knew who was supposed to be on the east side. He knew who was supposed to be on the south side, the north side, the west side, and who was supposed to be in the middle. Does that sound like religion to you? That you know where your product is or you know where your people are? That if you needed to know where is a particular item in your house is and I got to get my closet, together little by little. I'm not going to frustrate myself to say, I'm going to go in and do all that and then I don't do it because I'm overwhelmed with what I, how much I got to change. But being able to put things back to where it be so I can keep it organized. What got my attention this morning is how pe God brought these people out of a land, an unknown land, but taking them to an unknown land from a land and the way he ordered it. What I thought about is, I thought about the United States. 
and I was listening to a white, a Caucasian guy this morning, and I don't say that because I'm not authorized to do that. But I'm saying that to say this, and I, because I wanted to know why is it that most of the white churches and the people that I listen to on YouTube, and they have the word of God, and they, we can tell this story just alike. We, we can, I can repeat exactly some of the things that they say. Well, people on YouTube that teaches the word by chapters. We all say the same thing, but I was like, what, why is it that our illustrations are so different? And why is it that when we leave our buildings, we come back to our homes and we go to our separate communities, but we all worship the same God? Why is that? That was my thought. Because I, I listen to some certain things that some some uh, Caucasian pastors may say, and it tells me why people don't change quickly. Quickly. So I looked at how God moved people from one place to another. Then I watched how the United States brought people in from another country to this one. Even though these people were going to be servants of God, he didn't bring them on boats and ships and lock them down and put them in feces and all kind of uh, unhealthy uh, transportation to get them from one area to the next. He organized those people so well till they couldn't help but prosper when they got to the land that they were on their way to. If you start out wrong, you're going to be wrong. If you build a nation on a man and you bring him and you steal him with the words that do not steal a man and sell him, the penalty of that is death. As the United States, when you bring people in and you build them on the mentality that you are nothing and then you are going to build me a city and we're going to call it the city of God. And we have been wearing God's name on a place that God said, I ain't never told you to start a place where you build it and call it by my name the way you did it as a nation. Then you get your currency and say, in God we trust. Then you write your constitution and then you wonder, has the world, what's going on with the United States? When I saw Numbers chapter 2, when I saw Numbers chapter 2 and I saw how God did the group of people that he led, he didn't bring them in chains. He had them people so organized, and he said, when you walk in, I want people to know you are orderly. You're not coming in like a mob. You're not coming in to, to, to put fear in people. I want you so attractive when you go to the city, you, they gonna understand somebody new in town. But here it is, all these years, we did not go after the pattern of God when we built this place. And perhaps there were people who were saying, no brother, no brother don't do that. Maybe, maybe they were. But the history that we have, and it has gone on this long, but with the moment that you brought one man to the house and you didn't do them, that man right and establish a nation of that one man, then that whole nation is guilty. And the only way the word says, the only reason why y'all we mess up so bad is because you don't know me. He said, you err because you don't know the scriptures. I showed you how to start a new land. I showed you how to start a marriage. I showed you how to start a family. I showed you how to start a church. If you start anything and you start it crooked, then the end result of it will be crooked and it will fall down. And that's why our nation must repent. We got to repent for how we got started. We got to repent for the lives that we, and it's sad 
that, you know, what we know about our nation, if we're going to be under God, you, you got to go back and do it how God did under his word. Numbers 2 tells me this morning that the United States started out incorrect, and that's why it seems to be collapsing now. And again, he says, if my people, which are called by my name, and it's not just happening in the United States. I didn't know a little bit more about the United States. That's all I've been in all my life. But if a nation and those children of Israel were all centered around the tabernacle, the north, the south, the east, the west, and God was in the middle. We started this nation wrong. And our churches are ashamed. And if our white churches don't start telling people, we're not under God's, the flag and the banner that God told the children of Israel to, to hang over you, we can't, we don't have a right to hang that banner over here because you didn't start it right. You didn't start it right. You got to teach that in church. All of us got to repent. We got to repent for the sins and you got to repent for knowing what the word said and not asking God, what do you really mean behind these letters of these words? We are not a nation under God. Because if we saw how God moved the nation, we would have been moving the United States the same way God did. Organize your people. Get them organized. Put a banner over them. I got four banners. It's the same banners that the beast was bowing down in the book of Revelation. When I thought they were beasts, now the more I read, the more I understand. But it was the lion, the face of a man, an eagle, and a, and a, and a cow, a bull. That's where their mascots in their different north, south, east, east, and west. And the children of God who served God was in the center. God said, I'm in the center and you all around me. If you bring a group of people from another country to establish a new land and put my name on it and my emblem over it and the way you did it, you got to get on your knees and repent as a nation. That is numbers two. I don't think of this stuff. I ain't know the words. I don't know what numbers three talking about. I just met numbers two yesterday after I did numbers one. And as a nation, we got God printed to me. Oh, let us go back. I, we ain't never get started right. It never should have brought those people in that way. And I'm not saying that because I'm black. I'm saying it because I just read it in the word. The pattern of starting something new is to get God's plan and go read it. And do it like he did, and it will it will, it will be exactly what he said. But this nation did not start right. That's why we the white churches don't understand why the black people do this. You didn't start it right. You didn't do it like God. You didn't number the people like God. God did not put them on boats, but they laid down on the boat and got there. And then beat them off that boat and say, go out there and do this and do this and cut this down and go get me some more. And I don't know how they did it. Perhaps one of my relatives probably sold them into slavery. I don't know. All I know is, as a nation, we got to start over. Oh, Lord, please don't. I'm talking about history now. Now that don't let me start talking about 2020, what we don't know. Because the school system ought to be teaching this in the school. You ought to have the word of God lined up with what you've been teaching to see whether or not it's telling the whole truth. Because the way we got started, it was destined to collapse. And I'm, I thank God that I can tell everybody that comes around me. The reason why we are collapsing, because we didn't build this thing the way God built his new land for his new people. No chains, no boats, no killing you, none of that. He's going to lead you out with dignity. And you're not going in loud. And as long as you follow my instructions, you're going to have everything I promised. And that's all I got to say about Numbers chapter 2. I hope I don't mess up nothing, but I apologize. I, I thought I printed it so I can read it straight so I wouldn't bump it. But go back and read it, Numbers 2, and see how God orchestrated 600 3,550 people and brought them over to a promised land and they all looked like they had good sense. They were the Hollywood because they came in with God's direction looking good. America, all these songs we done wrote and gave God, we got to get on our knees 
and we got to go back and tell God that we repent or we change and we got to acknowledge that we didn't start right. That's why 2020, 100, 400 years later, we're still in a mess. You ain't build it right. You start a problem wrong. If you teach it, if a child don't get the first steps right and then you get all the way to the end of that problem, you ain't start right. That's why we're in trouble. But thank God for the wisdom. God, I didn't know it. I didn't know the word was in there like that. I don't have sense enough to... I don't have sense enough to, to look at the relevancy of God's word and compare it to 2020. When I saw that this morning, as I was getting ready to come sit out here, and the Lord clearly let me see, he said, you got to start right if you want to end right. This is just not the United States. We're in a mess. Everybody need to pay attention to the word of God. Now, you can walk around here and stay like you stay. Just as sure as the world is under one rule right now with everybody don't know what to do with these conditions. Unless we get in this word and get educated, whether or not you choose it or not, you ought to know what he said. Whether or not you believe it or not, you ought to at least know what it says. So you can see how it could be done if you choose to do it his way. So I say, I can't apologize for the United States. I can apologize for my ignorance of not knowing. But every time I see a slave ship come in now with all them black men coming in here to do that, this country was founded on something that was supposed to fall because it wasn't erected right. We were supposed to go to Numbers 2 and say, Lord, how do you move people from one nation to another holy, whole complete nation and you still be God? He said, go to Numbers 2. Move them like I did. Any other way? It may stand a minute, but it's destiny, destined to fall. Talk to y'all later. Love y'all. Chapter 3, Numbers coming up.